first things first then, lots of water, big brush, and I'm gonna wet everything. Plenty of water all over. Obviously, if you're gonna do this, just make sure your masking fluid is dry. Um, if you are putting masking fluid on, don't leave it um, wet, otherwise it will mess up your nice brushes. So plenty of water. There we go. Okay, so now, first color. I'm gonna keep it fairly muted, this initial wash. So I'm gonna use um, some of my um, burnt sienna orange brown. So like very orangey brown, burnt sienna type color. And into that, I'm going to put some um, cerulean blue, which is gonna give me a very cool, cool brown. And obviously depending on how much blue you put in there will give you a very, um, it'll either go a lot bluer or it will go, you don't want it to go too blue. I want to keep it slightly on the browny side. Okay, and here we go. So start to swish this on and I'm going to wash the top of the sky out a little bit to make it lighter. So don't worry about it being too dark up there. Take my spray bottle, plenty of water at the top just to get the paint to move down. Okay. And then I'm gonna continue that wash all the way down through everything. <clears throat> bit more blue, bit more brown. Gonna come a bit bluer at this bottom left hand corner. So in, in kind of in the water area. And up into those buildings a bit. All the way through there. And on this right hand side, I wanna go a little bit greener. So I'm just putting a, um, some transparent green, oh, sorry, transparent yellow into that same mix. So it's sort of a murky, bluey, brown, green color is what I want. So it's an, almost like a murky watercolor. So let's bring this in, bring it up into the building a bit, even up into the, some of those areas. Just break that up. Try not to be too neat with it so that it has a bit of interest. Down in there, all the way through into my washed area. more yellow, more blue. Put a bit more blue in there, I feel. All the way in. Just bring that up into that area, which is a bit, I think the paper's gone a bit on that edge. Never mind. Into my boat on the darker side of the boat, bring some of that color. Now, before it starts to dry too much, I'm going to just take some more water and just wash out a little bit of this left-hand side. Oh, I think this paper's gone, Never mind. Take some tissue, just blot a bit of this off. Just it's a little bit lighter over here. Doesn't have to be too light, just a little bit lighter. Obviously it's gonna dry a bit lighter anyway. Blot off all my washes. Just stop that from bleeding too much. Okay. Now, the next thing then is I'm going to bring some color into um, 
up into these roof areas. So more burnt sienna again. And obviously, because I'm going back into the wash, it needs to have a bit more, a little bit more color in it. And I want it to bleed a bit. Don't want it to be too, too crisp. We're coming down. Just on that roof line. In there, we'll have a bit in this roof. Some orangey bits, a bit of orange in this roof. Some down here. There's quite a nice colorful bit in here, which we can have. Some in the boat, a bit stronger. More burnt sienna. Bit in this boat. Can have some of that down in our water. Some reflecting down here. Bit more burnt sienna. Have some browns just poking through the background here. Some more just in the water here and there. A few bits. Okay, clean my brush off. Now I'm going to go into some um, cerulean blue. Just neat cerulean blue. Put a little bit of the burnt sienna in there, just to knock some of the blueness out. It's slightly a dusky grey. And bring some of that now into my building line. Some of the front of these roofs. The odd bit here and there. This one's actually should be a green siding, but never mind, we'll make it blue now. Window there. Might make that a bit green with that bit. Can have some blues back here. Some blues coming down. There's a bit of blue in this boat. And then we can also add some touches of blue down in our water. Even at this early stage, make some of those water patterns up. The blocking out almost like where we did with the shading, where you start to figure out where these darker parts are within the painting. So starting in this right hand corner, I'm going to start to figure out where the shadows are coming. So we're coming down underneath this first building. And I don't need to worry about um, all the different colour pieces of plank and whatnot in there at the moment. I'm just going to bring a generic shadow colour through first of all. And then later on we can come back and add um, more colour to um, pick out those other shapes. So I'm just bringing this under the under this boat, this darker colour, just indicate some shapes there. So it kind of comes under here a little bit more. Wiggle its way all the way over to this boat. Coming down. Add a little bit more um, 
green to that now, so yellow rather, to make it go a bit murkier in that same colour. I'm going to put some of that same transparent yellow a little bit stronger down the bottom here. Just break up some of those shapes there a little bit. Coming into the bottom of this boat. So I'll leave that as a bit of a broken edge for the moment. Just spray that out as such. Just the edge, just to keep it soft. And then taking this green color, greeny gray, I'm gonna use that within this netting that I've got here under this <clears throat> first piece of post. It kind of comes up and sort of comes down behind the boat around that pole. So about there, just lift out the bottom of that, wash. <clears throat> Bit more of that green over on the edge of the water. Now we can, I will leave that for the moment. We'll just bring the shadow colors next again. So more of the burnt sienna, uh, the paint gray and the brown. through my boat for some reason. I'll have to sort that out afterwards. <clears throat> so we've got some darks underneath the staircase here. So we can start to get these in, which come down to about the boat level. Coming down roughly to where the water level is. And then we can just define where that is. That edge. And then we've got some more darks coming into this area. On the base of this hut. So let's just put those in. Some darks there. And then we've got some more darks in here. underneath the stairs. A bit more brown, just to vary it. So all of this in here is very dark. I dropped a smaller brush now. Just to get some of these shapes in. over here. So under this hut, it's dark. We can pull some of those marks down into the railing. And also as well into the ladder. get that started. Then underneath here is 
again dark. And this comes down to some what looked like some weeds or something down at the bottom there. Just, just make it really dark under these little ladder bits. So leaving gaps where the treads are to give the appearance of the ladder. Let's just fill these shapes in. A bit more of that color. So we've got another post, which is about there. So we're just blocking the far side of the post. And then it kind of comes across. We've actually got some dark shapes, which aren't very defined. So I'm just going to make some shapes up there that are just dark. And that leads us over to where our little figure is. And the <clears throat> and the stairs are kind of up behind him. So these posts kind of come up. And then we've got some caps. Again, where the staircase goes up. <clears throat> Then we can fill in some of these shapes just here. And then that's our net, which is going to be there. So if we bring the color down now a little bit, a bit of ochre into that same mix, make it a bit more yellowy gray. And I'm going to continue this through. Put some more yellow on the edge of that, stronger green and yellow. Because there's like some, I think there must be plants or something on the edge of the water there. And I can use some water just to pull that down with a little bit more blue in it. Green it up a touch more. Coming across behind the boat. Okay. Then I'm going to just soften off this edge. Maybe continue that color along a bit further behind my figure. Way into the distance back here. A bit more water in it. Give a suggestion of some of those water patterns. For that, I'm going to use some um, more Payne's Grey. I seem to be using a lot of Payne's Grey today. Um, just into my murky mix. So it's going to kind of be a dark greeny, browny kind of dark greeny, grey kind of colour. Um, and I'm just going to establish the drawing of this boat a little bit better. So it kind of comes down here. And I'm going to put it in fairly dark because. Um, the paper's not behaving brilliantly, so I want it to show up a bit better. So it comes across, across the front, goes up. And I'm actually going to dip in a little bit to some red as well, just some cadmium red along that top edge. Back into the grey. Kind of comes along the bottom. Just going to put some water actually along that bottom edge. 
Hopefully it will just bleed out a little bit, just to keep it softer. So we're coming along the edge here, up to the front, a bit more red. Go a bit stronger with the colour because it's not really showing up. Back into the greys. Put some blue in there now, just some cerulean blue because it goes lighter as it comes to the front of the boat. So much more cerulean blue. Actually a little bit of cobalt as well just to strengthen the blue up. It kind of comes over and then down and back and then we've got a light area so I'm just going to use a little bit of transparent yellow for that just there and then back into my greys and then up and then it's actually red again dip back into some red. The front section here is pretty red coming down the curve and then that comes up and then we're actually into some turquoise. Turquoise right at the front. The glare is actually quite bad. I'm going to tilt it down a bit. And then a tiny bit of turquoise just on the <clears throat> just on this front edge here. Just there. Okay. And then the little figure himself. I'm going to use some crimson. And because he's got quite dark skin, I'm going to make it quite a dark orangey brown. So some crimson with some um, burnt sienna. Probably too dark, go a little bit lighter, a bit more water in there. So we've got his neck, head, arm, his other arm, his legs are here somewhere. So we'll just block those in. Like that. So that's the figure. <clears throat> the netting, so I'm going to put that bit of netting in. It's in the background with some green. So this is some netting here. Just kind of hanging down towards where the water is. <clears throat> so I have that. Clean the brush off again. I'm going to put my blue boat in now. So for that, because the paper is playing up, I'm just going to use some um, quite neat colour. So I'm going to use some um, cerulean. But because <coughs> I need it to be quite strong, I'm just going to use it neat. Um, and get this drawn in. So the boat kind of comes from there, comes down. This way. And to the back. And it kind of comes up. There. along the water line and then up and I'll put some red on that one again just using cadmium red so there's a bit from where the stair is there kind of comes across like that okay now I'm going to get the Start to get some of this green in on this building. I'll try and get the green in the building. So cerulean and the transparent yellow together. I'm just going to give you my green and 
slightly more turquoise than that. So I'm going to put a bit of um, almost like a viridian green. So I'm going to use, yeah, let's use some blue, just some cobalt blue as well in there to make it a bit more a bluey green. Right, so now this colour comes underneath the roof line. So I'm not going to worry about the darker part of it just yet. I'm just going to get the this shape in. Kind of disappears under there into the shadow. Comes across this front edge, down. and kind of cuts into that bluer area. Put some pieces of this in through the blue. There's a window here. I'll just pick that out. It's got some slots in it, slats. Some shape. So the corrugated um, metal. We've got the railing which runs across here, down, and it comes back down the hill. So this is just like drawing again, like we did last week, but now with a paintbrush. to about there then it starts to become vertical so then i'm just going to wash in some shapes and then some verticals we can always come back later on and then add some shadow to that just show the bottom edge just there And then that turns the corner, starts to go downhill again on this side. So we'll just replicate some of those marks. And then we've got the railing on this staircase, which is the same color, which comes down like that. And then same on this side. again at the bottom and then this railing which is pretty much the same color going all the way back there again with some um, uprights so let's clean that brush off now need to get the area on here some stronger blues and then once obviously we've got all of these shapes in we can then think about bringing some shadow and things into it so really drawing again just with some blue just to get these awning details marked in then we've got this part of the apex which can go in <clears throat> we can paint that in then we can put some of the blue in for this building there's some railings here and also back here there's some Just coming down. Quite a few blue bits actually into the distance. Let's go back here, we've got some blues. And then there's lots of bits of railing and details. So again, I'm not really gonna put 
all of that in, I'm just going to put some blue colour just to kind of um, assimilate what's there without actually painting it. Okay, now the whole of this bottom area, obviously going through the bottom of the buildings, is pretty murky, grey, blue, brown type colours. So I need to get a few more of those in before I bring the very, very dark colours in. So I'm going to use my green and um, Payne's grey and a bit of brown again to make the sort of murky colour, brown, brown colour. And just continue some of these shapes along. So we've got some poles in here. We can come round the back of the face, down roughly to where the water is. Just remembering to leave the bits that are lighter unpainted. That's kind of the important part of this exercise. You're almost painting everything but the bit that we drew. Um, just to make sure that those become the, um, the elements that show up and the dark bits become the shadowy shapes. So we'll just block in some more of these little bits of just some horizontals, a few diagonals, just to mimic. Again, we're not really trying to paint every single step and um, bit of detail, just want some colour there just to break it up. Take some more of that colour up into the side of this building, which is quite light, so I'm going to put lots of water in it. <clears throat> so some of these buildings here are a little bit, I've got some tone on them. So I can cut in there with a bit of colour. Bring that down a bit lower. <clears throat> and then this one's quite a browny one. Let's use some of our murky brown colours just to get the side of this building in. Just remembering that there's some perspective to the way that those that it's facing. So I want to make sure it's going down to the right, like we talked about last week. We'll just take this all the way through, even in that little gap there. Can even let the blues mix a little bit. Just down to the edge of that building. And put in the side of this building, which is going to be a grey colour, brown grey. a bit of red in it as well, just to make it feel a bit more rusty. This is just Payne's grey and a bit of cadmium red. Um, just so I can pick out the edge of this building, which is going to start from about here. Kind of comes up to the roof line, goes under this bit of awning. Coming down. All the way down to the bit that we've already left. Got a bit more red in there. So then I can actually pick out these shapes in here now, which are behind this building in front. Some of that in. Going 
coming down. And then we've got the staircase, which is about there. And there's just bits and pieces going on. So we'll just leave some broken bits of color there. Bring that behind that bit. <clears throat> and even into the railing there. Fine. And then I need a slightly bluer version of that. Just to fill in the front face of that building. So I'll bring that through the top section here, down, down the side, and then just add water just to wash it out as it comes down the front of the building there, under the stairs. <clears throat> like I said, to block in all of this shape up here which is coming all the way down the front of the building. Might as well fill in the whole shape actually. And I can just put my shadow over the top. A bit darker. Comes all the way down there and actually continues just underneath. Let's just bring it through to there just to link that together, otherwise it doesn't make much sense. Back to my ready colours, red and burnt sienna together, a bit of, bit of grey in there just to dull it down a bit. I'm going to get this front edge of this awning in, let it bleed up into those greens a bit. Just get that front edge in there and also here as well. Make that a bit stronger. <clears throat> I can start to detail up a bit of blue into that grey. Start to find where my balcony is here. So let's just do that. So it kind of comes underneath and then comes down the pole a bit. I'm not going to put the whole pole in because it's just the shadow of the pole underneath the stairs, comes into the stairway and across to the other side. There's actually a bit of plank under there as well, we won't worry about that. There's a bit of pole here, which we can start to find. Some bit of wood coming out of that one. There's the stairs coming up. And then it's pretty dark just in there, which is in the stairs itself. And then behind the staircase, got some more darks just in there. Right in here, we've got at the edge of the railing, it's pretty dark there. Let's go a bit bluer in that. Blues and reds together. Make that a bit stronger. Underneath this bit of wood, it's very, very dark. There's actually a piece, supporting piece of wood in there as well. So we'll leave that unpainted. Comes down roughly to where the fishing net is. And then behind the fishing net again, there's another piece there. And we'll put another piece there just to show some of those beams up that are in that dark space. <clears throat> Over here as well, there's a mishmash of dark shapes, so we'll just put some of those in. Need to lift out some of that, it's a bit too much paint there. Okay, and then down here by the boat, we can actually bring some more darks here. Down by the water's edge. And 
we'll put a few dark shapes into where the treads are of this step so that the actual stairwell starts to show up. <clears throat> Tying a little bit there, a little bit there. Need to bring that over a bit more. Just to get that to show up a bit better. Coming all the way down to the front of that boat. Comes under the boat. And then over on this side, it's pretty dark as well. So we've got around our netting. I think there's some sort of box on this little boat, some sort of shape there. Get those shapes in a bit darker. Slightly more purpley, I think, just for variation. in here. Do some little light holes as well. Just in there. And then round this pole where the wind is blowing it, we've got some dark bits. And then on this side of the pole it's very dark. Even darker still. Just get that nice and dark in there. <clears throat> More brown. Comes across here. Yeah. Leave a few little light a bit showing. All the way down to our boat, which is dark here. Front of the boat. And we've got some like bits of wood sticking out of the ground or the water. I'm going to go to this side. I'm going to make some of those up. Another little staircase or something coming down there. Perhaps some wiggles for the reflections. There's, a, there's actually a staircase coming up this way as well. I should just put that in to break that up. It's very, very dark here. Just a few bits there. So the actual sheet itself, I'm going to put some colour on that. It's not really any colour in the painting in the reference, but I think it needs some colour. Let's go um, yellow, I think. Well, they probably don't have yellow fishing sheets, but hey ho, I think it needs a bit of yellow in the painting. Let's go nice and bright with the yellow. So, there are plenty of that on there. Just billowing out. And then I can also take some of that same yellow and have a few spots. I might need to use some <clears throat> um, acrylics, perhaps, or 
some gesso to get that a bit stronger. Once it's dried, it's going to disappear. Some of these marks in the water down there. And then I can also take some of my darker patches that I've got up up here and start to reflect some of those down and make some of these patterns again in the water with the brush. <clears throat> Let's get some of these in. Nice and strong. Bit over here. So intentionally leaving some of the color from before showing through to be the lighter elements in the water. All pens gray, a bit more brown. And we'll bring that now over to the base of our boat. So our boat needs to come a bit stronger. So I'm going to put some water first through the boat line all the way to the bow. It's not going to be ideal because the paper's gone, but it'll just help a bit. And then I'm going to run this dark colour all the way through the base of the boat. Take some of the red onto the brush as well. Run a bit of that in there. Start to make some of these patterns squiggle their way down the paper. So it gets quite light as we come down the um, the face here. So we can also have a few little tiny bits on the edge. Take that all the way down more blue all the way through through to the darker sections need more panes gray again in the brown the ready brown A bit more water so we've actually got some very, very dark bits coming down, down here, which we can link together. Leave a bit of light behind the boat there showing. Some of these poles. Just wiggle that away. Okay. So we'll leave the water for the moment. Back up into the buildings. So I need to add some more, um, some more darks now into the building line. So this main building here needs a lot more, a lot more tone on it. It's far too light at the moment. So slightly smaller brush again. And I'm going to get this front section of this building in. Using some, uh, almost like phthalo blue, 
a very strong turquoise blue. And into that, I'm going to put a little bit of the cadmium red, just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to start to bring that into the front of this building. So it's going to be pretty dark. And this comes down underneath the these shapes. I'm sure we can go over that one because that's all dark. Comes through down away into that roof line. So this is all very, very dark in here. Coming down the front. <coughs> Just link that up to that edge, which goes back that way. And then I'm going to go and put some more red into that mix. <coughs> Bring this shape just a little bit lower. I'm going to leave a tiny gap between the two pieces of paint. Just a little white gap. <coughs> just so that they keep their shape. And then that can continue all the way to the front of this hut. And it comes down up the back of that awning. Darken that up. Darken these shapes up. Comes down right the way to the back. <coughs> we need to fill this shape all in as well. We've actually got a pole coming down there, so we can fill that in. Right the way to the front. Like so. And then I'll bring that also down into the railings a bit. Just so they're not quite so white. <clears throat> A bit darker again. Slightly more tone in there. And then there are a few windows actually in there. I'll just pick out a little bit of shape there. That's a bit there. As we get into underneath the stairs here, this is all railing. Might just make that very dark, the railing. Just on the inside there. Very dark. Three colours. The ones that I used over here and just fill in, just get this blocked in. Um, just to unify this shape so it kind of comes down and actually before I do that I'm just going to take a bit of water and just run it along this corner because it's actually a little bit lighter in that corner than it is in the main body come all the way down fill it in all the way down to the railings so we come across the front of the railings and to the edge of the building, like so. I'm going to bring that down the side of that bit of railing there as well, just to tie it together. 
Okay, and then the this patch of the building. Do we want to leave that? Mm, might leave that for a minute. I might not put any colour on there just yet. So now let's put some of these pole colours on. So I'm going to use some um, transparent yellow again and the brownie greys. And I'm going to run that now. Uh, this pole is going to be kind of a brownish colour. Let's come all the way down a bit on this one. There's some on this distant one. There. Bit of that colour through these poles just to knock them down so they're not so white. Down to the bottom. Just knock these down a bit as well. And then the, the treads on the stairs can have a bit of that colour as well. Along with these bits. Some in those. Coming down this pole as well. Up into this main pole. Can put some of that on here. Coming all the way down. Just knock those down a bit. A bit too too light. Too dark bits. These can come a bit darker. And actually we can come darker in these shapes as well. In there. <clears throat> Make all this timber structure a bit darker. And then that comes into here as well. Some of these poles can come a bit brownie greener. Have some of that on this railing as well. Up a bit more of that colour, it's quite enough. The same colour. And then I'm just going to use that again just to lose the whites on some of these bits back here. Just bring some of these poles a bit stronger. This is the railing actually, which it should be blue. So put that pole a bit darker back there. <clears throat> Just some shapes in there. A few poles verticals here, the old diagonal. Just lose some of this back here, it's a bit too light. <clears throat> Put the odd slightly darker window. Few more darks in these areas. 
underneath the awnings. Coming along. You can actually get the, start to develop the shadow shapes in these roof lines. So it kind of comes up, down, and it comes down a little bit there. And then that will link to this building. Coming down there, could get some dark under this tin roof. Comes across down to the windows. So there's actually a window in here. Darken that up. Underneath here, down to the doorway. There's like a doorway here, so that's can actually go in pretty dark as well. On the side of that building. And then we've actually got some little windows here as well. Another doorway here perhaps we'll make another doorway up here let's bring some dark shapes in there and then the figure can have some dark across the top of his head for the hair. Perhaps his shorts can be a bit darker. Bit of shadow, dark underneath on the boat where he's sitting. Just a few darker marks for the timbers that might be in the boat. <clears throat> now I'm going to dip into um, use my rigger just to get some drawing marks in now. So I'm going to use um, let's go with some burnt sienna, just some neat burnt sienna, just dipping my brush straight into that, as you can see. And then just going to get some stronger marks just to shape up some of these areas, make the roof a bit more. strength it's kind of corrugated so i'm going to just bring some lines down and through to the back let's make it a bit stronger up here Trying to keep these at an angle to show the pitch of the the pitch of the roof. A bit stronger. A bit of that down on this boat. Again on our foreground boat as well. A 
Here we have the edge a little bit lighter here. A few more lights down in the water here. Again, a bit of that brownie colour in the water over here as well. Got some of that same colour on the edge of this building. It's quite a rusty brown colour. And we can also put some of that in the doorway here. And perhaps just some little bits and pieces of that. There is some actually in the roof line up here, quite dark. <clears throat> Gonna make these all more brownie. Just on there. The odd bit on the front of the awning. Some verticals. A few horizontals. Just wiggle the brush a bit just to suggest some bits and pieces going on there. Down on this water edge. So I'm going to change it now to some more ochre. Something a little bit lighter. Bring it a little. And ochre, ochre, ochre. That's a nice style. Always the one colour you can't find. Okay, so clean that brush off. So dipping into some yellow ochre now. <coughs> So this should be a little bit lighter. So I can actually bring some lighter marks on the edge of his hand, perhaps on his foot. Might even make his pole a bit more ochery. And then we can just wiggle that away. The in edge of the boat. Let's make that a bit lighter. The odd bit on some of these poles. Some ropes or bits and pieces hanging down. There are actually some wires, telephone wires, which we'll get in a, in a minute. Need to put the shadows in on those bits, apexes. Comes up and then Stuart, down. Yeah? How do you know when you've actually finished a painting? <laughs> um, how do you know when you finish the painting? Um, well, it's quite a tricky one because sometimes you'll come back to a painting and you'll think, oh, I could just do that or I could do that. Um, 
a lot of the time if you feel like you're not really making any improvements and you're just pushing paint around then you probably ought to stop because you're not really adding anything of any value you're just kind of going through the motions so that's a good time to stop whether it's finished or whether you just need time to um look at it afresh that's a different question okay as for finished i mean normally it's better to try and stop earlier than later just because um it's very very easy to overwork and it's very very hard to under you know to to, book, to pull it back if it is overworked so um i don't know it's not a very easy question to answer but i think you just you kind of just have to feel as though what you're doing is still adding value and if it's not adding value then stop <laughs> if that makes sense yeah thank you i was just i was watching you do the other boat and harbour mm -hmm. yeah and um, and you were adding all these little extras and i thought i wonder when you know <laughs> it's actually just right well, i mean i never know i mean it's i don't i don't think it's an exact science you know even i get it wrong well i get it wrong probably quite a lot of the time perhaps you overdo something or you underdo it but sometimes you know it's a personal choice as well like um i might like the way something looks and i think it's finished but then others would say well oh, that needs a lot more work so you know it's it's a preference thing i think more than anything um You've got the eye. Yeah, I think a lot of it is you just learn from experience as well, whether you think something is about right or not. Um, but yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it's I think that's something that most people will probably struggle with. Well, not struggle, but contemplate when you know when have I finished? <laughs> um, but uh, kind of develops as time goes on, I think. Right, that's enough of those filly bits. Right, I need some darker bits now. So I'm going to dip into some Payne's Grey, just neat Payne's Grey. I'm going to use it out of the tube, it's just a bit more convenient. I'm still using my rigger. And it's fairly dry again, because obviously I want the marks to stay put. So I'm now going to use this to add some really nice, strong, dark bits to my um huts and you know some of the underlying perhaps there's ropes and bits and pieces going on um in some of these areas so i'll get some of this on underneath the staircase darken some of those up Under there, Oops, the glare is pretty bad. I'm gonna to have to tilt it a bit more. Can you still, hopefully, you can still see that? Um, let's get a few darker bits just on my water line here as well, up into the boat. Seeing as he is going along, I can make that a bit darker. Put some lines on the boat there. Could have some, I don't know, some shapes up in the building here. A little bit of detail under the, just to strengthen the drawing up in here. I've missed all this dark out underneath the roof line. That's clever. So all this needs to be darker. Just put that in dry so we get a bit of broken colour. That's quite nice. This needs to be a lot darker as well. Let's get that in. And also in here, this is very dark. So by applying the paint in this sort of dry fashion, I get all these nice breaks in the paint, which can be quite interesting. It makes it Makes it a little bit more, um, I don't know, just add something a little bit to the, to the colour, rather than it just being totally flat. So let's continue that through underneath. 
And then we've got some little bits of detail back here on these roofs, roof line, some verticals. Very dark actually in here. Get some of those marks in. I need to keep stepping away, so I'm just going to tilt that again just to see what's happening. So, probably could do with going quite a bit darker in the shadows, but for the moment, I think we're fine. I'm going to add a few more little stringy bits here and there. We've actually got some some wires coming from outside the picture. We'll get some of those in. Obviously, these must be connected to something. Okay, clean the brush off. <clears throat> now I'm going to get the some more colour into those there. So I'm going to use some, um, quite a bit of red actually in the reference. So I'm going to take a bit more red, just neat red, because red obviously is always quite a good eye catcher. Don't want to use too much of it because it will just jump out, but um, in places it can really make the painting sing. A bit of red and the yellow next to one another there will be quite nice. That will brighten up this end quite a bit. There's actually some flowers up here, so I'm going to put some abstracts, just bits and pieces over here. Uh, I could put a bit more colour um, back here somewhere, a few little dots of red, some flowers or whatnot. There's actually another little boat back here, so I might put a little splash of red just in there. Clean that off again. Now more darker colours, so bigger brush, into some neutral tint. And I'm going to put some burnt sienna and neutral tint together. So neutral tint is like a very, very dark, mauvey, almost black. And I'm just putting some brown in there just to sort of um, break it up a little bit. So this area I want to go much darker. Add some more darks in here. Around my coloured areas so that this then shines more. That's really what I'm after. A few dits and dots there. Again, let's brighten this up a bit and go a bit darker in here. Perhaps we'll make some shapes. Not really entirely sure what they are, but they're just just bits of colour. And that will come down inside. We can actually take that right away up. Leave some of those little bits of colour poking through. Right. Pretty dark in there. Again, I'm just going to have to tilt that just so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. And then the same colour, the neutral tint into some of these areas over here just to get these stronger. Intentionally trying to leave them a little bit broken. I don't want them to be too, too um, heavy. So just leaving them almost like abstract marks, not really exact as such. Okay, 
So a few little marks back here. Break some of this up a bit. Bit too light there. <clears throat> the odd vertical, again, horizontals to suggest bamboo or other bits of architecture. A couple of bits back here. It's almost the more abstract, the better, really, back here. You don't want to be too literal. Just little dits and dots. Let it disappear into the distance. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go more blue, a very dark blue shadow. So the neutral tint and just some blues mixed together. So it's very dark, but it's a blue dark. And then I'm going to bring that into these areas just to darken this up a bit more. And then we've actually got some little bits of detail on the roof there. Darken that up a bit. Some edges there. Slightly darker. Just a couple more little spits and spots there. And then maybe the odd bit in the doorway. Just there in the window. Okay, so I think really I'm getting kind of, <laughs> going back to your question of when do you know when you're finished, it's getting nearly there for the moment anyway, where I probably need to stop looking at it for a period of time and then come back to it. 